Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic today is the African-American press and economic development. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the African-American press and economic developments, uh, Mr. Sam Latham. And of course, Mr. Latham, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me here. And to tell you, uh, Mr. Latham, that uh, I I'm sure that most of our audience know you uh, <laughs> quite well because you've been involved in uh, dealing with the African-American press for a long time. We've had many opportunities to talk to you in reference to that. But uh, there might be a few who might not know you. And so let's okay. give you an opportunity during this first segment to talk about some background information about your career and some of the things that were important in terms of your newspapers as well as other information that you'd like to deliver for us this morning. Well, I would like to take you back to Sweetwater, Tennessee, which is a uh, city in East Tennessee, 30-some miles below Knoxville. And growing up, we didn't have access to the black press. Uh, when I became probably nine, ten years old, I uh, ran across a copy of Pittsburgh Courier. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was one of the three or four national black newspapers mm -hmm. and was quite impressed. As a matter of fact, started selling it because that was the only way I could get it in my hometown. It was 10 cent a newspaper back then, but very good information. It covered the White House. Uh, and uh, I guess one of the extra features is that uh, my cousin, Oscar Robinson, was mm -hmm. making history playing basketball mm -hmm. at that time. And they used to cover quite a few of his games so I could keep up with what he was doing. And I guess I developed an affinity for black news at that particular time. And uh, sometimes you don't know what kind of impression that makes Good. on you okay. when you're young. But uh, when I left Sweetwater, Tennessee, came to Nashville to go to Tennessee State University, uh, I was amazed that a city this size didn't have an established black newspaper. So during my matriculation at Tennessee State, still kept up a lot with what was going on nationally in the uh, press. And so having a degree or having gotten a degree in biology, uh, I pursued teaching for a couple of years after that. That was 1968 when I finished uh, out there. and. From that point, I uh, don't know how it happened, but I was uh, contacted by a headhunter mm -hmm. and got an opportunity to go in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so part of my development was to attend the MBA program and specialize in marketing. And uh, I chose to go to the University of Tennessee at yeah. the time here in Nashville mm -hmm. with that. And I've always enjoyed writing, Dr. Mm -hmm. Haney. And got the opportunity to do some technical writing in marketing, that is some of our uh, findings and results uh, mm -hmm. based on research, market research, and uh, they would always gravitate to me to write up the reports mm -hmm. and give yeah. to clients, and so uh, that was a, a natural love that I had, and uh, finally got the opportunity to work for a newspaper. It was a paper that came online here called the Ebony Gazette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I worked as the assistant to the publisher, got a wide range of experience in doing that. Uh, the gentleman's name who was the publisher was Elder Simon, mm -hmm. uh, who used to be at Riverside Hospital. Mm -hmm. So we worked in that for about a year, and he had some partnership problems, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it sort of uh, mm -hmm. went out. And I decided to get some more experience. I worked in uh, radio and broadcast mm -hmm. and until it was time for me to launch my own publication. Mm -hmm. And that's been now 30, right at 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you've been involved for the last 30 years yes. dealing with the African-American press right. uh, in, uh, in and around Nashville, in Nashville the state of Tennessee. And, and uh, Memphis. In yes. Memphis. Uh, yes. and, 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 so the, and, and that's what we want to talk about, uh, the economic development, uh, because you've had an opportunity to see a lot of things happen yes. over those years, and you've got a lot of knowledge in reference to uh, how uh, things work in reference to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's almost like two different periods mm -hmm. in Nashville. Uh, in the 80s, I think we all suffered some with the uh, recession that was a hangover from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Then there was sort of uh, an uptick mm -hmm. that the whole community began to mm -hmm. surge forward. And out of that, uh, we developed some gigantic companies mm -hmm. like uh, Excess Med Plus, uh, Phoenix Healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, we own the radio station, own mm -hmm. quite a few things. And 
Uh, really, the 90s, it was a pinnacle mm -hmm. in terms of economic development for blacks, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. loans weren't that difficult to get, okay. or as difficult mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. back then. But then suddenly, almost uh, akin to the Reconstruction period, mm -hmm. things nosed that. Things turned, turned against uh, everything that was progressive and acceptable. Oh, and of course, so. uh, uh, let's uh, get ready for this first commercial break, uh, uh, Mr. Latham. And uh, that will give us an opportunity when we come back to uh, talk about uh, how this downturn, because I think that the one that we're suffering now is uh, certainly worse, but I think there might be something that we might be able to get out of that in terms of uh, experiences, and et cetera. Okay. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. We're talking to Mr. Sam.